In today's video, I'm going to be doing a brief overview of all the Fly app features. Let's get started. What I appreciate the most about the main screen is that there are several features on this screen that you can access without having your remote connected or your drone turned on. Let's start at the bottom left hand corner. You have profile, sky pixel, album. The top left hand corner, you have your current GPS location based on the device that the app is open on. On the top right hand corner, you have your academy. And the bottom right hand corner, you have the connection guide. Let's start with the album. When you open the album, it's gonna have all your photos and videos if you choose to automatically have them downloaded while you're flying the drone. Now these are cache files, they're basically low resolution. I'll go into more detail on these in the deep dive video. The other option is to go to the aircraft album itself. Now this is based on the micro SD card that's in the drone. And these are gonna be full resolution photos and videos. Okay, let's exit out of this. There's an arrow on the top left hand corner. Now up here on the top left hand corner of the main screen, you have your GPS address. What's really neat about this is that if you tap on it and open it, it gives you a map. If you zoom out, you'll be able to start to see where you can and cannot fly. Absolutely brilliant. Built in, DJI is amazing about this. You don't have to go to a third party app to figure out where the restricted zones or areas are. Another nice feature about this map is that you can enter ahead of time an address, a zip code, a state, a city, and you can plan a trip and see where you can and cannot fly on that trip. Go ahead and tap on the left hand corner arrow, exit out of that. On the top right hand corner, you have what's called the Academy. Essentially, these are tutorials that DJI has put together based on the model of drone that you have. And you can choose from two different levels, basic and advanced. All right, let's exit out of this. And then we'll proceed to the bottom right. And here we have the connection guide. So this is specifically about connecting your drone so you're gonna tap or click on your drone model. And when you open it, it's going to instruct you on how to get your remote connected to your device. All right, let's connect our drone. Exit out of the screen here. Now the way that I like to connect my drone to my device is to turn the drone on first. You probably already know this, but bears repeating. Tap once quickly and then tap and hold the second time and it turns the drone on. And then you repeat the same thing on the remote with the power button. Tap once quick, and then tap and hold a second time. In just a moment, it will be connected. On the bottom right hand corner, it'll say go fly, and then your drone model picture comes up. And then you should also see your camera view. Once you tap go fly. The flight screen on the DJI Fly app, in my opinion, is really well laid out. All the important information that you need while flying the drone is right here and easy to read. Let's start on the bottom left hand corner at the map. Now this is the same map that you find on the main screen of the DJI Fly app. It's going to show you all the restricted flight areas as well as no fly zones. There is an added feature though because you're flying the drone. On the bottom right hand corner you'll see the Find My Drone feature. Now I'm not going to go over this right now in detail. I'll do a deeper dive in a different video. And I'll also do a deeper dive on this map. There's several options here on the right hand side. So let's exit out of this. On the bottom left, just tap on the image and you'll go back to the flight screen. Now on the top left of the flight screen, we have what's uh, currently it's on S mode. That's called sport mode. This corresponds directly with your remote. Now sport mode is the fastest that the drone will go. If you flip over to the middle, you'll be on normal mode, which is in my opinion, medium speed. And then if you go from normal, you can go to cinematic on the left hand side. Now it says C mode. That is the slowest that the drone will fly at based on these presets in the remote. Now next to the mode, we have a message that says take off with caution. Now this is not a static message that you'll always see. It will change. So this is based on what the drone's seen um, with its camera and what it's sensing. If you tap on the message though, it'll actually open up the pre-flight check, which is great. So as soon as you connect your drone, you connect your remote, you have your device uh, up and running, the Fly app is ready to go. I go right into the pre-flight check. I look for any cautions about my conditions of where the drone is placed and about flying it. It'll also give me messages if there's any issues with the camera gimbal, 
with the drone itself, the blades, anything. Now, in addition to the condition of the drone, below here I also have my presets for return to home altitude or height, my max altitude or height that I want to allow the drone to fly at, and my max distance that I will allow the drone to fly away from me. Let's click or tap out of here. If you follow directly over to the right hand side here of the screen, you'll see the battery percentage. Also the time left that you can fly on that battery. Then you'll see the signal for the remote control and then also the count of how many satellites are connected to your GPS. And over here we have three dots. We're not gonna go into this exactly right this second. I'll come back to it in a moment. So let's proceed straight down. So these are your camera settings. On the top you have picture mode and if you tap on it you can switch over to video mode. And again I'm not going to do a deep dive on all the different settings here in this video. I'll do it in a future video. But just below that you have your camera shutter or your start and stop to your video. And then you have a play button. It will open up your DJI Mini 2 micro SD card album or you can click and tap over to the app album. Let's exit out of here. Below that you have your auto mode and pro mode or manual. So you can click or tap between that and it will change the settings here on the left hand side. So on automatic you're obviously going to have auto settings. You can change your format of your pictures as well. But if you go over to pro mode you're going to have all these different features that you can tweak these different settings and next to the camera settings we have the storage of the micro sd card now we're going to travel across the screen and over here where you see miles per hour feet the d stands for distance so as soon as you take off from the ground and you start flying in any direction the drone is going to start to relay information saying how far the drone is away from the remote control so you're going to see distance in feet and you're also going to be able to see how fast the drone is traveling in the miles per hour. Next to distance, we have height. So as soon as you take off with the drone and your drone is off the ground, the sensors on the bottom are going to relay information here saying how high off the ground you are. And then again, you've got miles per hour. So that's going to say how fast the drone is ascending, going up in the sky, and how fast the drone is descending, coming down from the sky. Now let's move back up to the right hand corner of the flight screen and tap on the three dots and that will open up five additional categories and their independent screens. We have safety, control, camera, transmission, and about. Let's start with safety. Now you'll notice right away at the top of safety you have the same max altitude, max distance, and return to home altitude settings that we saw in the pre-flight check. Below that, you can change or update your home point. And then we have calibration. So again, back to the pre-flight check. There are times that the drone will tell you that the compass and the IMU need to be recalibrated. Below the calibration, we have battery information. You can tap and go into the battery screen. Go back. And then we have unlock geo zone, advanced safety settings. And last but not least, we have Find My Drone. If you tap on this, it will reopen your map and allow you to search for your drone. At the top of Control, you can change the units and how they appear in the DJI Fly app. For example, by default, the drone comes in metric setting. I changed it to Imperial, and that will give you miles per hour as well as feet. Next, you're able to adjust the LED lights that are on the front of the drone. I currently have it on breathing and it will alternate through all these different colors. But if you tap on this, you've got multiple options. The gimbal settings here are pretty cool. You have follow mode and FPV mode. Follow mode will keep the camera level and FPV mode will actually pivot with the drone. The gimbal rotation setting is interesting as well. By default, this is off and the camera can only come up to level. Now, if you wanna look a little bit higher than the horizon, the level, of where the sun comes up and the sun goes down. You can actually tap this and turn it on and it will allow the camera to pivot up higher. Here you have gimbal calibration. There will be times where you get a warning on the pre-flight check portion of the flight screen and it will tell you to recalibrate your gimbal 
or that there is an error with the gimbal and you would come here to try and correct that error. Now you do have advanced gimbal settings as well. You tap into here, you can actually do a lot of adjustments. You can also recenter the gimbal in order to correct an error. You can choose to use some of the battery that's in the controller to charge your phone. And then you have your stick mode options. Tap into here and you've got mode one through three and then you can customize your sticks as well. There are options for customizing um, the function button on the controller and those options are can be found here. There will also be times that you need to recalibrate the remote control. There is a flight tutorial uh, when you first get the drone and you register and get everything up and running and then repair to aircraft link. So sometimes there are occasions when the drone can become disconnected with the remote and you would come here to repair it. At the top of the camera settings for photos, you can adjust the format and the size. The format options are JPEG and JPEG plus RAW, and the aspect ratio that you can go from is four by three and 16 by nine. Now, if you change from photos to video, you will obviously get different settings under camera. For video, you can turn on and off the anti-flicker. You can choose to have video subtitles. And in order to change the quality of the video, you're gonna come down here to the bottom of the flight screen. You're gonna tap this. And here is where you adjust your frames per second, as well as the quality um, of your video. Now this does frustrate me a little bit that they split these up and then it's not also under here so that you can make your settings and just save them and leave it. So under general, you have your on and off options for histogram, overexposure warning, grid lines, and white balance. And the bottom half of the camera screen has to do directly with your micro SD card settings. You can format your card when it's brand new or when you dump everything, delete everything off of it and go out for your next flight. I always recommend to reformat that micro SD. You can also turn on and off the sync downloaded files to your photo album on your phone, the auto sync HD photos, and the option to cache your photos and your video while you're flying on your phone in a low res format. And then last here, you can reset your camera settings and start all over. When it comes to transmission, for the most part, I would just leave everything on auto and not mess with these very intricate settings. But what is interesting is under transmission, at the very top, you have the settings to start a live stream with your drone, which I think is pretty cool. And below that, you can choose your frequency uh, depending on where you live in the world. You may not have the option for the 5.8 gigahertz, and you may only have the option for the 2.4 gigahertz. Certain parts of the world, you can do either one and you set it to dual band so it'll pick the strongest signal. Under the about screen, there are a couple of things that I will point out to you. First thing is that you can customize the name of the drone. Obviously, I personally chose not to. So this has the date that I registered and activated the drone with DJI. And then you can also check for updates for your firmware here. Very important to keep your drone software up to date. Overall, I would say the DJI Fly app is a nine out of 10. The app has all of the information that you would ever need before, during, and after you fly, in my opinion. I hope that what I shared with you today is helpful. If you have questions or even comments or suggestions for future videos that you would like to see, leave a comment or even send me a direct email if you like.